everyone, welcome to this week's video. I'm Shannon and I am continuing on my series of best and worst rooms at Walt Disney World Resorts and almost done with my Disney Vacation Club series. So today we're going to go back to Wilderness Lodge. So my first video was regarding Boulder Ridge Villas and today we're gonna go back to Wilderness Lodge and cover Copper Creek. So. Um, Copper Creek was the addition based, and I wouldn't even say it was an addition. It was the addition of Disney Vacation Club at Wilderness Lodge. They basically took half of the lodge, turned it into Disney Vacation Club. So they converted half the lodge and converted those rooms and then added, I think 20 cabins. Now I think they're called the Cascade Cabins. I'm not gonna be covering the Cascade Cabins today. Basically, if you're looking at the Cascade Cabins, it's a different um, kind of setup. And I'll probably be covering Cascade Cabins and Bungalows for Polynesian in separate videos. But again, I need to do some more research and I don't know many people who have stayed in them so or can give a lot of input. So, But again, if you're in a Cascade Cabin, I think you're gonna be happy no matter what. So we're good there. But Copper Creek, again, we have never stayed there. We were set to stay there in April of 2020. So about six months ago and we all know what happened in March everything closed down so we never got to stay there very disappointing but hopefully we will stay there in the future however when we did stay at Boulder Ridge Copper Creek had just newly been finished so I am familiar with the resort though I'm not so familiar with the Copper Creek side so let's before we get into best and worst rooms let's get into the breakdown of which rooms are in each, each category so just like with Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek does not have a view category. There is basically just studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, that's it. And then of course cabins. So there's no view category, which makes it a little easier when trying to see which room um, you might wanna you know, request because you're pretty much anyone in the studio category is open to you. Now there are, I believe, a little bit of a category as far as walk-in shower. Some have a walk-in shower and some have a bathtub but I don't have the breakdown of those so that if you booked a walk-in shower, know that the room you're, gonna book, you're going to get needs to have a walk-in shower because those are allocated. So let's start with the studios. And there are 42 dedicated and 36 lock-off. One bedrooms, there are 20 dedicated and 36 lock-offs. Two bedrooms, there are 56 dedicated and 36 lock-offs. And then three bedroom grand villas, there are four of them. So the one thing I will tell you when trying to book Copper Creek, if you are looking to book a studio or even a one bedroom in those peak times, you almost have to own there. And that's basically because of the amount of points that the cabins took that not many people bought into Copper Creek to rent solely the cabin. So a lot of people bought to get some of the smaller rooms. So those studios are some of the hardest to get even at 11 months. So if you're looking to rent, and again, you're at seven or eight months out and you're looking to rent points, you're probably not gonna get a studio at Copper Creek, especially not for maybe a week. So keep that in mind, you can always wait list. I've been very, very lucky with wait list and been able to stay at a variety of resorts through wait listing, but just keep in mind, it is one of the harder resorts to get into. And as always, I'm going to give you a little tour of what's around so you can get a kind of a lay of the land of Wilderness Lodge as in a whole so you know where do you want to possibly request your room. So let's get into that now. As always, we're going to start on touringplans.com's page for Copper Creek Villas and Cabins at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. As I mentioned before, we're not going to go over the cabins today, but this page will give you all the information you need to know regarding Copper Creek, as well as some room tours and some pictures. There's some beautiful pictures of the cabins. There you go, if you want to see that. And um, you can also find information regarding Wilderness Lodge on that page, which you can see right here, Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort page. So you can see that obviously some great pictures of the hotel rooms or the villas and all the information that you need to know for Copper Creek will be on this page and I will post the link below. Okay, and here is the map of all of Wilderness Lodge 
as I mentioned in my video on Boulder Ridge Villas, this resort consists of actually three resorts in one. You have the Boulder Ridge Villas, you have Copper Creek Villas, and then Disney's Wilderness Lodge. So this right here is, this part right here is the original Disney, uh, Disney's Wilderness Lodge that has remained the hotel. And then this wing right here is Copper Creek Villas, as well as those cabins on either side. And then this with the, I guess, orange or red roof is Boulder Ridge Villa. So that is the breakdown. This is the grand lobby where you find that beautiful Christmas tree during Christmas time. And the bus stop is, I believe, right around here. So that's the bus stop for to go to the parks. Magical Express would be here and the main lobby would be here. So to go over a little bit of the restaurants, the famous Whispering Canyon is right here. It's right at that B, if you see the B right here. C right here is the Territory Lounge. And then D would be this art, the Artist Point, which is now the Character Dining. It's currently closed, but hopefully it will open soon. F right here is Roaring Fork. That is the quick service at Wilderness Lodge. This is Geyser Point. If you haven't eaten at Geyser Point, you are missing out to me. It is fantastic. And it's kind of like a somewhat a hybrid of a quick service and table service, but it's beautiful views on the water. Even when it's chilly, it's not so bad because they'll have they have some heat lamps. It's just great. And let's see right here. This is where you rent the bikes and you can rent um, the boat. So there's some activity there. So that's fantastic. There's two pools. This is the quiet pool for uh, Boulder Ridge Villas. That is called the Boulder Ridge uh, Cove Pool, I believe. And then this one right here, which is H. That one is the Copper Creek Springs Pool. And then right over here is a splash pad. We never got to use the splash pad while we were there because it was just too cold every day. There's not a lot of sun. So if you're a sunbather, you're probably not going to get that much sun. And if it's if it's colder, you're not going to get a lot of warmth over here. There's some sun, but the buildings, because the buildings surround it, it really doesn't block a lot of the, um, it blocks a lot of the sun. So it doesn't get too bright. Plus there's a lot of trees, but it's this beautiful area. The slide is small. My son would probably love it. We never actually got to go into this pool, but my son would love it, but it's a small slide. So if you are one that likes those big slides, this probably won't be the resort for you, but it's absolutely a beautiful resort. The gym, the fitness center is in the Boulder Ridge side. So that would be right here. So just keep that in mind. There is, it's right here in that Boulder Ridge section. So this is the overview of Copper Creek Villas and as well as all of Wilderness Lodge. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to show you this picture and kind of give you a couple things to think about. So first of all, if you need a laundry, so you are staying in a studio and you're going to be using the free laundry available to DVC members, that is located on the fourth floor. So just keep that in mind. You may want to request being on the fourth floor so you're near the laundry. And if you don't need the laundry, then maybe you don't want to be on the fourth floor. Also to keep in mind that the fifth floor, which would be around here, is where the full balconies pretty much end. So some of the sixth floor right here, you can see that they are enclosed and they have the overhang and then the seventh floor as well. There's some of them are enclosed and they so there's that overhang and that would be very dark. If you want to know my thoughts on that, I had an experience with that type of room on the Boulder Ridge side back in December of 2017 and it made the room very dark and dreary and I would never want to stay in that type of balcony room again or not one to go out on the balcony but it's just still made, there was just no natural sunlight. So you can have some amazing views from these floors and some people don't mind them, but keep that in mind that if you like to sit on the balcony and, and watch what's going on, you really can't do that in an enclosed balcony because of the wall. So you're not gonna be able to see anything. You really have to stand to be able to see everything. I also wanna make note, this. see this concrete column right here? This is going to come in effect in these rooms right here. I'll talk about those in a second. Those are going to be 2117, 
21-19, and then 31-17 and 31-19. So that walls are going, those walls right there are going to block those rooms of those balconies. So I'll talk about those when I get to those categories. There are studio and one bedrooms. And I would say those are probably the worst rooms because they are going to be blocked. But I just wanted to show you a visual so you could see that. Um, So again, fifth floor is really the last floor where you're almost guaranteed a full balcony. The sixth floor, it's hit or miss. And then seventh floor, it's almost all enclosed balconies. Okay, so now we are at Copper Creek. I'm at the the, uh, floor two because I just mentioned it. So I wanted to mention those rooms and I'm not going to use the room types. I will caution you. The room types on terrainplants.com for Copper Creek are really mismarked. So you almost have to kind of go with what, how they're shaped and kind of know what you're looking for because a lot of them are mismarked. Some of them are marked correctly, but not all of them. So I'm just going to not mark them right now. So let's see, we, this is 2115. We'll talk about that one in a second. This is the room I was telling you about. This is 2117. That's a one bedroom, but let's talk about the studios first. This one right here, 2119. This was one that someone mentioned, basically that concrete wall, and then you have a bush and you also have an enclosed balcony. So I would try to avoid this room. Again, this is room 2119. Great location because you're literally right off the lobby, but you're going to have a lot of view um, view blocked. And also that concrete wall, I can imagine that you're going to have a lot of darkness because that concrete wall is going to prevent a lot of that sunlight coming in. Now, with that said, I think anything in this corner right here is probably not ideal just because the same thing, the darkness. Not, I, I don't think they're bad rooms, but I personally would probably want to be, I personally, I would want to be on this side of the, um, of the view just because I would want to have the peace and quiet. And if I'm at Wilderness Lodge, I kind of want to see some wilderness. So here you have it. I love, I've always mentioned that I love that patio. You've got the wilderness right there. I also feel like you're not going to have any of the prying eyes of people walking through back to the pool. You're not going to have any loud um, yelling and screaming from the pool. This is going to be very peaceful. Plus this would be very close. But going for the worst rooms, make sure I would say the really the only one that I could find that was not a good room was 2119 in that studio category. So going up to the seventh floor, which is the top floor, these are the rooms I said, again, I would say to avoid just because of those enclosed balconies. I don't know if we have any pictures here. Beautiful view, absolutely beautiful view. But as you can see, you can see right here, those enclosed balconies. So really you're only gonna see the view, you're only gonna see the view and you're gonna have the roof from if you stand up. So beautiful view, if you if you don't mind that, you don't mind an enclosed balcony, some people don't, then that's fine. So now let's go into those best rooms. And these are the best rooms and we're gonna show you right now. And that that is this line right here. This is 115, 2115. This goes up from the second to the seventh floor. And it is, as you can see, it is a kind of a corner room. It is what's called an alternative studio. It is, they don't run it out specifically and you can't request, you can request it and that's what we're going to do right now, but you can't book it through points. It's just basically luck of the draw. They, like I said, there are six of them. There's one on the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh floor, and they are all 115. So ending in 115, you can do the math. So two, um, Two one one five, beautiful. I believe this is probably one up, and it's not blocked by that column because that block that column is blocked by two one one seventeen. So that's not going to block it. But if you're going to go personally, if I were going to request a studio, I would probably request first for one one five because then I would be close to the laundry. I'd be a little bit higher, but I would have a beautiful view and that alternative studio. And I will post a link to the alternative studio. There's several videos on YouTube of this alternative um, studio. 
There's only six of them. So again, you may want, if you're going to request one of these alternative studios, you definitely want to make sure you put in your, your other options. So if those aren't available, what else you want? Also, all the alternative studios have bathtubs. So if you have booked a studio with a walk-in shower, don't request this room because it's not available to you. It is a different category. So keep that in mind. But this right here, 115, ending in 115, that line is the unicorn rooms. There's six of them. Get them if you can. Okay, staying on the studios. So those are my those unicorn best and then those worst rooms I would say to avoid. As far as that, I think everything else is really preference. As I've stated before, I love the ground floor. So if it were us, we would probably request that corner room because it is that good. But if we couldn't get it, then I would say I would probably want one of these two rooms on this floor or I would want to go to the fourth floor and again, be on this side, just because we like to have the wilderness. We also want to make sure we get the sunshine and anywhere in here, it's just not going to have at maybe as much sunshine because of the building. Also, we like to, the, the view of the pool and the lake is beautiful, but personally, we like to um, have a little bit more quiet. Now, if it was winter time, then maybe we would want a room on that, that floor. So that just kind of keep that in mind. I would say just try to avoid maybe these corner rooms. So if you're going to request, don't, I wouldn't request one of these like super corner ones, even maybe the next, next one next door is fine. But right here in that corner, again, you're just kind of right on top of each other and it's just going to block that sunlight. So those are some things to think about as far as for a studio room. Okay, and now we're going to go to the one bedrooms and let's start off with the worst rooms. So there, that one that I first mentioned, which was 2117, which is right here. That is the one I mentioned that has that column blocking the view. They, the person there, I actually was on the Diz board. So that map earlier was from Diz boards as well as a comment from somebody, I think it was in 2017, right after they reopened, that they hated this room and they just absolutely hated. They felt that this room was smaller in size. They couldn't uh, confirm it, but they felt that this room was smaller in size. And again, the the blocking of the column really was just, they just did not like this room. So you can probably find it, just type in a Copper Creek Villas, 2117 and I'm sure you can find it because that's pretty much how I found it. So going now up to the fourth floor and there's something interesting that I learned that a couple of the one bedrooms have a different layout. So in this layout, I'm going to post a picture here. You will see that the refrigerator is right at the front door. So literally you walk in and the refrigerator is at the front door and it's a little bit away from the galley kitchen. To me, that's odd. That would drive me insane. And now some people might not care. If you get a great, if you are all about the view and you don't care where your refrigerator is, then it's not going to, it's going to be a non-issue for us that we're constantly We do cook in our room when we're in a one bedroom. We do use the refrigerator quite a bit. That would drive me insane. So for me, one of my particulars when when requesting my room would be to not have a room where the refrigerator is near the front door because I... I only was able to find that it is in this line right here, which is 106. So 4106, 5106, and 6106, as well as the line 33. So 133, so 4133, and I think this only goes up to six as well. So there's six rooms that, there's at least six rooms that have this configuration where the front door I mean, the refrigerator is right near the front door. And in addition to that, there's also less storage space. So again, that's if I'm in a one bedroom, I want the storage space. I want a somewhat normal kitchen. I'm not a fan of the Copper Creek kitchens and the the way of the layout. Some people love them. I personally don't care for them, but I do think Copper Creek is a beautiful resort. It wouldn't prevent us from staying there. But having the refrigerator near the front door, yes, that would drive me insane. I don't care about a view. I don't want the refrigerator near the front door. 
personally. So those are, those are probably the worst rooms. So 2117 is one to avoid as well as the 133 line and the 106 line. Now you get up on this line and you're on the fifth floor, you're going to have spectacular views. So if you want a spectacular view, then go request, uh, you know, 5133. I did have someone say that they were in that room. They absolutely loved the room. They loved the view. It was odd for them, but they didn't, it didn't bother them. But again, for me, it just really depends on personal preference. So those are what I would say to avoid as far as other things that you, that you prefer, it goes back to what you prefer. Obviously this is going to be a long walk from the lobby. I believe the elevator is right around there in the front. So Ground floor, I would always want to be on the ground floor. I would probably want to request one of these rooms right here. You could be close to the pool and the Boulder Ridge pools on this side. Uh, Geyser Point is right around here. So, and then I believe there's an exit out this way. So personally, I would want to be around this side, but, um, or this, or the second floor as well. You're going to have some nice views, but you know, I think it just all depends on what your preference is. As always, I would say, well, these are going to be studio, so that's not going to affect, but I would say this room is probably one none. I would not want to recommend just because it's right in that corner and just got a lot of public, you know, I don't know, just, just risking having the curtains open at the wrong time. So that's all. I'll leave it at that. So there's uh, for one bedrooms. So now we're going to go to the dedicated two bedroom. Again, if you're looking for a lock off, then just refer back to the one bedroom and studio uh, overview that I did and just check if, see if those are lock offs. There are 36 of them in each category. So obviously there's 36 lock off two bedrooms, but I'm not going to go over those today because it's pretty much just repeating myself. So going on the dedicated, there are 56 two bedroom dedicated. And first thing I can tell you right now are these right here. These right here, which are the 100 line, 101, and the 102 line. They start on the third floor. I believe they go up to the sixth. Let's check that. Yep, they go up to the sixth. And, and I'm gonna show you right now why I do not recommend these rooms. And this is, I believe, room 4100. And there you go. You got, I mean, it's not a bad view. You've got basically, I mean, you've got a view of a roof and you've got a view of some trees and a lot of roofs. So you have a view of the the security gate and, you know, but there's also the balconies. You've got these enclosed balconies. So you can see you really can't sit out there and there's really nothing to see. So these lines, especially being in a two bedroom, in a two bedroom, you're paying these just a lot of points. I definitely, I think the worst rooms by far are the 100, 101 and 102 line. And those go up from the third to the sixth floor. Now, going over to the best room, um, I think it's really just a preference of what you like. A lot of one person did on the my DVC points community said that they had this room right here, which was 5120. They said they absolutely loved it. It was a view of the Boulder Ridge pool and you've got just a view of Boulder Ridge. There's a beautiful view and I mean, it's just, it's a great view. You're going to have a lot of sunlight. The pool is a little bit further away where you're not going to have um, probably a lot of loud yelling. And I think this pool tends to be a little quieter. Most of the activities are on the other side, but still just a spectacular view. You won't get a fireworks view on this side, um, but just kind of keep that in mind. But still, they absolutely loved it. And it's also very close to the elevator. So it's not that far of a walk. I think this room, I think this area right here is the probably the best of both worlds. So I would highly recommend the line uh, 120. Again, avoiding the seventh floor because of the enclosed balconies and probably avoiding the sixth floor because a lot of those might be enclosed too. So I think the fifth floor standard to, you know, dedicated to bedroom, I think are going to be great. And let's see if there's a review. Well, this, this doesn't, this has one floor down. So this is on 4129, but again, spectacular view, a little further away. And you probably could maybe get some fireworks view when they start, but 
I, I think you really can't go wrong. I think really it's just about as are you, do you really want to be close to the elevator? But the main thing is to avoid these rooms right here. Okay, now we're going to go over those three bedroom grand villas and these are spec spectacular. There are only four of them. So we're not going to spend too much time because if you do are and you are lucky enough to book one of these, it's really going to be which ones are available. You can obviously put in a request, but there's only four. So this one, it is 2137 and it is the 137 line. They are on the second, third, fourth, and fifth floor. I will say this map does show that it is on the sixth floor. It is not. It is only on the second, third, fourth, and fifth floor. But let's look here and see if we can see some beautiful pictures. I will also post a link to a video that has a tour. I believe Torian Plans and Len Testas did stay in one of these rooms uh, when it first reopened. So absolutely spectacular, beautiful view. And I mean, of course, they're going to put the best views for those grand villas. So obviously, if you are requesting and you are staying in a grand villa, I would start with 5137 and just request the highest floor. They're all in the same area. So you don't really have to worry about area, but who cares? Because you're in a grand villa. So that's it. That Those are my best and worst rooms at Copper Creek Villas. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Did you, this was a hard one for me because we never stayed there as well as because it is a newer resort, there's just not that much information out there. There's some, but just not a lot. So if you get one of those rooms with the one bedroom with the the refrigerator near the front door and it's a different line, please leave it in the comments below so that I can add it. I will definitely add that to my notes below so people can read the notes. If there's any other information after I record this video, I will put it in the notes and I will add and update it so you can just look there. But there we have it. Those are my best and worst rooms at Copper Creek Villas and Cabins at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. So there you have it. Those are my best and worst rooms at Disney's Copper Creek Villas and cabins, but we didn't go over the cabins, but those are my best and worst rooms. So let me know what you thought. Did I get it right? Did I miss something? And leave it in the comments below. As always, make sure you use terrainplants.com to make your room requests. And if you like this video, make sure to click like, click and subscribe, and ring the bell. That way you get a notification every time I post a new video. And I think you know, I got one more DVC resort left for Walt Disney World, and that is Riviera, and that's gonna be coming up soon. Thanks everyone, bye.